Medicog, uh-huh, hold on. Medicog, uh-huh, hold on. M Medicog, hold on. May I help you off with something? Beg your pardon? I said, can I help you? What'd you think I said? Uh, nothing, I... I'm looking for uh, whoever's taking care of my girlfriend, Catherine Powell. That would be Dr. Burton. Take the elevator to the second floor and make a right. If she's not there, go to ICU down the hall from there. Whatever you do, don't stand too close to her. <laughs> Why is that? A little chilly. <laughs> right. What can you tell me about this Dr. Burton? She's the boss. I can't tell you anything. Not here anyway. Where's Farley? In the basement. Take the elevator, follow the smoke. Smoke? <laughs> yeah. As you know, Farley's not the cleanest pathologist going. But we haven't had any complaints from his patients yet. And he's a soft touch for a smoke. If it wasn't for him, we'd never have any fun around here. Curl, did he really tell you that? <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No. Oh, hold on, hold, hold, hold on. Sorry, handsome. I'm, I'm kind of busy. But uh, I'm off on a break in a little while. If you're interested in hanging out with somebody who's not in a coma. <laughs> no, I'm back. Yeah. No. Did you really? How am I supposed to open this? What are you doing here? My name's Jake Quinlan. I'm a friend of Catherine's. Quinlan? How is Catherine? Is she gonna be all right? It doesn't look good. Her consciousness is deeply withdrawn. W withdrawn? What's that mean? 
It means her mental processes, her memory, the basic building blocks of her personality are inaccessible. You mean she's in there, but you can't reach her? That's a best-case scenario. We haven't yet diagnosed her psychic damage. Well, is she going to be all right? It doesn't look good. She's still in triage. We're going to just have to wait and see. What are you doing for her? I'm not doing anything for her as long as I'm standing here talking to you. Why don't you let me get back to work? How did the Ripper do this? It's hard to tell. She had some minor contusions on her head, nothing fatal, but you never know with head injuries. We won't know anything until we can get a data angel in there to do some investigating. You can get a data angel into the consciousness of someone in a coma? I'm not sending anyone in there until I've had a chance to fully map her psychic damage. Now, if you don't mind. I mind. How did Catherine survive the attack? Who knows? Maybe she fought him off. More likely someone, or something, interrupted the Ripper before he could finish. You had to check on Miss Powell? Yeah. She looks pretty bad. Is there anything you can do for her? She's in good hands. And she'll be in even better hands once Dr. Burton allows us to treat her. Was well, there any hope for Catherine? Not at the way we're going. We haven't even established an etiology, let alone begun to treat it. We've downloaded megabytes of fragmented images, sensations, memories, but not much that helps us at this point. Anything that might help ID her attacker? Well, there's an image on one of the monitors in the lab that's displaying an image we retrieved from Catherine's short-term memory. Now, she saw the person who attacked her, but in this condition, her mind can only assemble an extremely distorted image of him or her. Well, can we make it clear or maybe use a computer to fill it out? No. Catherine's brain will have to produce the image. The only way to help Catherine is to restore the memories and personality the Ripper destroyed. What are Dr. Burton's plans for treating her? If she has something in mind, she hasn't told me about it. She's blocking everything except the most conservative treatments. We've started to assemble data on the patient's past. We're maintaining life support. That's it. Well, so fucking what? I mean, she doesn't know what to do. I thought she was the best in her field. She's one of the best. I don't know what it is about this case. There's something here she's not telling us. Have the cops said anything? No, not to me. Dr. Burton's the attending physician. Although I have noticed that scary-looking detective who checked Powell in keeps coming back. Him and Burton got into it yesterday. They had a fight. Oh, that's an understatement. They look ready to kill each other. God knows what it was about. I don't understand this. How can you rebuild Catherine's memory? Well, the way we always do in a case like this. We assemble all the data we can about the patient's past. Life experiences, food she likes to eat, favorite movies, information on who her friends were. Then we upload all that back into the brain and hope that it triggers enough associative reactions to restore her memory. What are the odds of this working? Success rate's very high. I mean, we may not retrieve everything, but we should get around 90% or so. What can I do to help restore that image of the Ripper? Dig up everything you can about the Ripper. Especially anything Catherine knew about the case. And of course, <laughs> none of it's gonna be of any use until Dr. Burton allows us to send a data angel into her brain, but we'll worry about that later. Okay. Yeah. Your friend's in stable condition, Quinlan, but she's not getting any better. And the image of the Ripper isn't getting any clearer.
the answer to the mystery. If I can only make this image clear, we will have our killer. Looks like a holographic journal. Could be worth looking at. Our options are pretty limited here. I tried direct cortex stimulation. It's risky, but there's a chance of it working. It's too risky. We could lose her that way. Well, we could try inserting data angels for a diagnostic. There's no risk in that. I disagree. We've no idea what's left of her natural defenses. The trauma could have made them even harder to penetrate. All right, look, then let's run the Norton Mapper program so we can obtain a stall profile and a cortical landscape. Then we know what we're dealing with. You mean that hasn't been done yet? Why not? Because I said so. I want her to stabilize before we introduce any kind of foreign code. But thanks for the consultation, but that's my decision. How much more stable does she want the woman? She's in a coma. What's her problem? She won't do anything. We're supposed to watch this patient die? She's in charge. There's not much we can do. Hey, Vic. What's for lunch? Hey, Quinlan. Oh. Ah. <laughs> you working your hard? Mm. Working me like crazy these days. Hey, is this Renee Stein? Are you kidding? You were at the crime scene. You saw her inside splattered everywhere. Yeah, I guess I did. Nah, this one was married to her ripper. Nah. A businessman away on a trip for three weeks. He gets paranoid that his partner's putting it to her while he's gone, so he flies home early and shoots it at that. I mean, stuff like that. That's why I never got married, you know? I, I have my chances, though, you know? Mm -hmm. Any luck figuring out the Ripper's weapon yet? 
I completely stumped. I did every test on these sticks. I mean, a computer cross-matched the wounds with every kind of blade imaginable. Nothing. I mean, it's like a cross between a Vegematic and a diamond cutter. Come on, Vic. Something must have cut these people open. Nothing these computers can find. Now, you don't believe me? Look at those control panels by the steps. You hear about my partner? Who's that? Catherine Powell. She was attacked by the Ripper. Somehow she got away. She's upstairs in a coma. Dr. Burton's treating her. Oh, so your friend's in good hands. Burton's a good doctor. And if she gets stuck, she'll probably call in her a secret weapon. What's that? A guy named Joey Falconetti. Joey Falconetti. Who's Joey Falconetti? Cyberspace expert that Burton uses on all our tough cases. Also known by his old sea space handle, Falconetti. Get it? Crazy guy. Likes looking at the bodies. I'm surprised she hasn't called him in yet to look at your friend. What do you mean? Oh, he's the best there is on human to human decking. She usually calls him in on that kind of stuff, but not on the Ripper work. Where can I find this talking, Eddie? Difficult guy to find. Burton usually goes to a guy named Gamut Nelson. He passes the time at the Cafe du Champ. Du Champ, Du Champ. Well, you can find him there. Hey, Quinlan, I got a serious craving for a Capicola hoagie from Fat Al. Now, if you're in the neighborhood, could you get me one? Now, hold it on the hot peppers. My ulcer is killing me. Yeah. Here's an isolation of just one of the organs from this body. The lines indicate the many cuts made for this organ. The sheer number of cuts isn't the only amazing thing, though. Watch this. All of those cuts happen simultaneously. Human hand can't move that fast. And it was like this for every organ in the body. I tapped the nerve memory of this victim and fed it into the simulator so that I could reenact the attack. Million dollar piece of hardware. And look what it gives me. Jesus. Looks like she swallowed a fucking grenade. Notice the path of the cut. Not one centimeter offline. Like a seam was undone. Now no human could have done this. Because humans aren't strong enough? It's not just strength, it's precision. He's cutting through skin, muscle, bone. No way this cut could be so neat. I'll tell you what else is weird. There are no traces of fabric in the wall. 